Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is Rathin Datta once again. Uh, today we are here to study about slope and deflection, which is also uh, called as uh, profile uh, deflection profile, finding of determination of deflection profile or uh, determination of uh, elastic curve. Okay, so lot to learn, lot to discuss. So I welcome you all. So coming to our topic today, we are going to find out what do you mean by slope and what do you mean by deflection okay before coming to this uh, i want to discuss few things uh, in this case we have taken as you can see a simply supported beam okay as you can see uh, a simply supported beam okay this one we have taken a simply supported beam what we are going to do we are going to find out uh, the slope and deflection before that i want to uh, tell you few things uh, as you know, uh, as a load is applied on the beam, in this case you can see uh, this is the beam, right? Uh, this is the beam black color and this is the load we have shown with W. As the as a load is applied on a beam, it deflects. So you can see the deflection in the dotted line, right? These are the dotted line, yes? You can see that? Yeah. So the deflection can be observed and also can be measured, okay, by... Uh, me with measuring instruments whereas the other parameters such as uh, shear stress okay and bending moment and uh, other um, other stresses okay including shear stress uh, that is the shear force okay and then bending moment and other stresses can only be calculated okay the other parameters the only thing that we can see and measure is the deflection only okay is the deflection okay though it is uh, important that the cross section of a beam should be strong enough to withstand the bending stresses and shear stresses okay uh, the um, also the deflection uh, the deflection should also be also be restricted means it should not be that much of def deflection that we see that leads to a crack in the beam that we can see and finally make a fracture in the beam okay uh, so uh, the today's topic that is the elastic curve determination of the elastic curve which which finally gives us the equation for slope and for the deflection okay in this case we have taken the simply supported beam as you can see at the point a and b it is supported the lo load w okay uh, so, uh, in this part, in the deflection, uh, after it goes deflection, uh, this uh, you can see right in the dotted line, we have taken a very small part or you can say technically it is infinitesimal length of uh, PS. The PS is equal to, we have taken DS. We will come to the, uh, we will come uh, to the thing that is in, in this diagram, okay, uh, what, what, what DS actually represents, okay. So the deflection profile of a beam means when you apply a load uh, and if we see there is a pure bending case means there is no shear force and all and the beam goes, goes into certain deflection means like that as you can see. Uh, what happens the deflection profile of a beam is known as the elastic curve this elastic curve okay deflection uh, profile of a beam is called is called what is called the elastic curve please mind that okay this elastic curve actually gives us the basic equation to find out the deflection to find out the slope okay and we can uh, we will say okay so uh, as we know if the beam is subjected to pure bending it is it will bend like this right it will bend if this is a beam it will bend like this Okay, so if a beam is subjected to pure bending, it is, it is bent into a circular arc, okay, circular arc like this as you can see, okay, and the radius of the beam or the radius of curvature means uh, uh, if we see if this is theta and this is r, this r can be actually defi uh, defined, okay, as you know from the equation that is m by i from the theory of pure bending that is m by i is equal to e by r so your r actually becomes what your r actually becomes e by i 
is divided by m okay we will use this thing uh, when we will um, when we will see this thing okay okay so let's discuss this thing just a minute yeah so we will be uh, studying this thing uh, as you can see uh, let me rub this portion and because we are going to use the uh, diagrams that we have drawn okay as you can see in this diagram uh, okay in this diagram uh, so uh, in the x-axis in the y-axis we have put this thing see this thing this ps is being designated here and with this we have tried to uh, did, uh, draw the radius of curvature this is r showing an angle d theta and what happens if we draw a tangent at this point p okay so we can draw this uh, right angle triangle which is which will give us uh, uh, the certain thing that is if we try to find out tan theta it will give us dy by dx is it not means what happened we considered a, a small length ps okay of the elastic curve because it has gone into a constant radius of r that's why we are call, calling it as an elastic curve of a beam as shown okay and r as we have written earlier m by i is equal to e by r so your r becomes what your r becomes e by i into m so this r is generally constant because we are trying to find out on the basis of some mathematical equations so this r is taken constant okay this r is the radius of curvature as we have discussed so what will happen uh, your um, uh, that one your length ds will become what if you if you see from this diagram it will be r into d theta is it not so we will be using these things okay one by one that is r equal to ei by m tan theta equal to dy by dx means it is uh, telling us about the slope the angle that is the d theta equal to dy by dx if you see this right angle triangle okay then ds equal to r d theta so the slope or uh, slope of the curve at the point p at the point p will be what will be d tan theta equal to dy by dx and ds equal to r into d theta so after taking this equation if we uh, differentiate this equation okay this equation with respect to x what will happen can you tell me see this will happen sec square theta into d theta by dx will be equal to what it will be equal to d square y by dx square okay and next what we can write sec square theta um, ds by dr no ds by r is equal to 1 by dx what we have done we have written uh, this thing if you see this equation your d theta is equal to ds by r we have put this in place of d theta okay and it will remain d square y by dx square okay i hope you are clear up to this point we have just uh, um, differentiated with respect to the x which equation this equation okay and we have used this value in place of d theta okay so if we uh, go into our next thing what will it will show it will show us uh, in like that sec cube theta by r is equal to d square y by dx square because since ds by dx is equal to what is equal to sec theta so if you go back see ds by dx right so it will do what it actually give us ds by dx is sex there was already sex square theta so sex square theta into sec theta will become sec cube theta right okay therefore your d square y by dx square will give you what we can write in place of sex square theta what we can write one plus tan square theta so uh, what how can we write this thing we can write 1 plus tan square theta 3 by 2 okay 2 2 will be gone so okay it will remain in the power of q right i hope this is not a problem okay 
So next what we can write? Can you tell me? Okay. Uh, since uh, what should we say? Usually the R is very large. The R that is radius of curvature. Radius of curvature is so large compared to the length of the beam. The tan theta or the slope that is uh, um, dy by dx. Okay. That is the slope of the tangent to the curve at any point is very small. It is in the order of 0 0.001. Okay. The square will be what? The square to this uh, this uh, tan square that is the tan of the slope plus one will be a very smaller value, right? So we will neglect this uh, numerator part. And what will happen? It will be d square y by dx square equal to one by r. And previously we have written as r equal to what? If you can remember, e by i e into i by m. Therefore, 1 by r will be what? 1 by r will be m by e i. So, we can put it here as m by e i. Okay. If we take out this part, what will happen? Your m will be equal to e i into d square y by dx square. Okay. Are you getting my point? See, this thing I am talking about, that is, your moment m is equal to e into i. e is what? e is the Young's modulus, okay? e is the Young's modulus and your i is the moment of inertia. i is the moment of inertia. So, what we have seen, the above equation, that is this one, um, m equal to e i into d square, y by dx is above equation is the governing differential equation as you can see it, it is in the order of 2 right it is the differential equation of the beam or you can call it as elastic curve equation of the beam or you can say uh, or you can say uh, um, as governing governing equation of beam okay okay what happens in this equation it has only taken the account of bending moment of only there is no effect of shear force please mind that we have only taken the um, matter of only m only the bending moment the shear force is not taken into the consideration and hence neglected so in this case you can see this uh, if we if we write it here as m equal to ei d square y by dx square right dx square yeah so you can see uh, the m is uh, directly proportional to ei right directly proportional to ei this ei is nothing but is the flexural rigidity are you getting my point this ei is nothing but the flexural rigidity it means the moment the force that we are applying on the beam for which a moment is there or we, we are applying a direct moment on a beam and th that moment which is being sus sus sustained by the uh, section of the beam okay uh, so this uh, uh, what i am saying is this er it means if m is becoming is in increasing your EI of the beam should also increase means more larger the value of EI the larger is the value of moment it means if your beam if your beam okay if your beam has a good value and larger value of EI it can take more amount of moment are you are you getting my point means if if this is your beam it should have a it should have a good flexural rigidity means good value of ei this is the product of young's modulus and the moment of inertia it means uh, the product ei which is the uh, the product ei which is the uh, multi multiplication of young's modulus e and i is an index of the bending strength bending strength of the beam so uh, it concludes one thing that if your beam has more amount of EI, it can take more amount of bending moment. Are you getting my point? It means your beam has more flexural rigidity. Okay. And coming to another thing, 
as you can see theta is equal to what dy by dx right so it is what it is your um, what should I say this is your <coughs> slope and from that we have find out m is equal to what m is equal to um, ei into d square y by dx okay so if we differentiate it again means dm by dx what will happen it will become dx uh, sorry sorry just a minute m equal to e into ei d square y by dx square so if we dif differentiate again dm by dx square what will happen it will become cube right so this will give you shear force f if you differentiate the moment that is m equal to ei dv square y by dx square it will give you the shear force f if we differentiate it again and so this is f equal to this one and again if we differentiate df by dx it will give us rate of loading okay rate of loading that is e into i is equal to d4 y by dx to the power 4 okay are you getting my point so guys all these equation are the result of differentiation okay differentiation so uh, we have find out what we have find out slope the bending moment and the shear force f and the rate of loading by doing what by doing the differentiation but please mind that if we uh, integrate actually integrate what the moment equation that is m m i equal to e i d square y into d x square if we integrate this equation it will give you a equation in terms of e i into y this y okay this y this y is nothing but your deflection okay are you getting my point this y is nothing but deflection theta is your slope your y is your deflection how we have done it we have taken the moment equation we have integrated instead of differentiation in the other three uh, in the earlier thing to find out the bending moment or the shear force we have differentiated right but in this case to find out the deflection okay what we have done we have integrated the moment equation and it will give you a y we will uh, solve uh, different uh, slope and deflection for different kind of beam with different kind of loading in our future lect lectures in this lecture i hope you have got the concept of the elastic curve or the um, what should i say the governing equation of a beam for deflection or you can say the deflection profile of a beam and little bit about the equation of slope and the equation of bending moment and the equation of y that is the deflection okay i thank you uh, thank you all once again for liking sharing and subscribing please do subscribe this channel because if you subscribe i can it motivates me to make more videos okay and thank you again and thank you so much